Man, FSD 1251, that was good. That was really good. You, you went around an unmapped traffic circle. You almost got confused, but you didn't get confused enough. Um, yeah, you know, I, this, I've said this quote before. I'm going to say it again. On this end-to-end -end neural network, FSD 12 is so smooth. Even the fuck-ups are smooth. Now think about that. What does that mean? You could be driving off the end of a cliff, but it's gonna do it smoothly. You could put yourself in the middle of a very dangerous situation, but it's gonna be smooth. Is that a good thing? I think it's a good thing. But as a driver or as a pilot, I kind of like bells and whistles and alarms to go off when I need to pay attention to something. If it's driving smoothly, and not being kind of doing something that might alarm me, I might not use the active monitoring, which is the term we use in aviation, that I ought to be using at that moment in time. So there is something to be said about the erratic behavior that we used to have when the car started to be getting confused, being a cue that I used to know something's not right here. But when it just very smoothly continues, if you're not really actively monitoring the situation, it can take you into a situation that you're not prepared for. Whether it be safe or unsafe, I'm just telling you, the car can be taking you to a situation you're not prepared for. And you're still supervising, so you're the one that has to be prepared. Um, we have not exonerated any responsibility here. The car is doing amazingly well, but you're the driver the supervisor. It's just something we're thinking about. Um, in aviation, we actually train a constant reiteration of the fact that you have to actively monitor the airplane. We even create checklists and verbal enunciations uh, so that we force ourselves into habit patterns to look at things that are very easy to overlook. Here's a very simple example. In every aviation pilot in the world, especially the flies commercially, is probably going to know this. We have one variation or other. When you change altitudes, at anywhere in the, in the course of flight. It can be down low going from 3,000 up to 7,000, perhaps just after you take off. Or it can be up at 35,000 going up to 39,000 up at cruise altitude. If I'm the pilot flying and I'm over in the captain's chair, which is where I sit, and I got a new altitude and I'm changing altitude to 12,000 feet, we're say. I'm gonna change the altitude selected for the aircraft to go to 12,000 feet. I've done the task of telling the plane what to do, but we're not done yet. The pilot monitoring who's sitting next to me, I actually say something. I say 12,000, and we at JetBlue actually point at the altitude we selected so that we physically put our eyes on that altitude again, and I verbalize 12,000. And then the other pilot that's flying with me gets the opportunity to look, and he also physically has to point at the number and say 12,000. And we both verified that we agree that's where the altitude we are clear to, that's the altitude you put in the airplane, and we're both saying and point at, pointing at it, which forces us to actively monitor what we're doing. We put those procedures in place so that we're safer and more reliable and more consistent and we eliminate errors. If you took that same philosophy to driving right now, I don't have any of those cues about speed, speed limit, turn, direction, you know, what's happening. I, honestly, I, if, I, if I know what the car is doing, I ought to be so far ahead of what I expect the car to do that when it does it, it does not surprise me. But we don't have that as drivers because normally we're the ones in control with our hands on the wheel. We are at the point in driving that we are giving that away to the car. We probably need to start thinking about how we teach people to drive to actively monitor the system that is actually doing the driving so that we can be sure it's doing what we intend it to do until we completely give it away, meaning in the back seat. So I don't know. What do you guys think? This is a conversation we probably ought to be having, specifically while we're in a supervised state or the, at least the driver is in the seat. We ought to be so in tune with the speed, the course, the direction and the intent of the car that we're not just sitting back here watching it happen and kind of hoping that we can avoid an accident. We need, you know, if the car is here, my brain needs to be up here. As this car accelerates, I need to probably think about it's accelerating to that. 
If it doesn't accelerate to that, I probably need to be aware. And then I could intervene. I could use an override. I can take over. I can disengage. If the root isn't what I want, I can change it. I have time to think about it. Um, anyway, that was a total um, rabbit hole I went into. And it may be worth its own video to talk more about the philosophies in automation and aviation and how they translate to what we're doing with these cars these days because we truly are giving away control to an autopilot and that's what we call it in the play, plane we have levels of automation once you give the aircraft control you're still in charge but now your role changes to monitoring actively what the intent of the vehicle aircraft is and as soon as it deviates from its your, your intent do something about it turn lower the level of automation change the intent or fix it what do you think about that should we talk more about that in the future that might be a little bit of a highlight clip to talk about on x2 uh but it's something to think about